Okay, I, you know, I'll use my uh, teacher voice. Oh, that worked. Okay, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Second Okay, good evening. On behalf of the League of the Mind of the Greater New Brunswick area, I'm pleased to welcome you to this forum. My name is Jill Lewis Becker and I am co president of the Greater New Brunswick Area League and I will be your host this evening. We will begin the evening with the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. As you may know, the League of Women Voters of New Jersey, a nonpartisan political organization, encourages informed and active participation in government, works to increase understanding of major public policy issues, and influences public policy through education and advocacy. Elections and voting are core concerns for the League of Women Voters. Year in and year out, leagues are committed to providing fact-based information about issues and positions candidates take on those issues to help voters make their own decisions and participate in the process. Conducting debates and forums like this one is one of the ways we encourage informed and active participation in government. <coughs> Your presence today helps us carry out our mission. We thank you for coming. We also advocate for the passage of legislation that extends and protects voting rights, offers equal education opportunities, protects New Jersey's environment, and increases government transparency, as well as many other activities critical to empowering voters and defending democracy. If you would like to participate in any of these efforts, the LWB of the Greater New Brunswick area welcomes members, both men and women, of all ages, including high school students. You will find information and membership forms at the auditorium entrance table. Now for a few housekeeping details about tonight's forum. Please be aware that the League of Women Voters never supports or opposes candidates for office or political parties. Any use of the League name or of footage from the debate in campaign materials, literature, or advertising of any kind, including internet, cable, or television, has not been authorized by the League of Women Voters. As a courtesy to the candidates, please turn off all your cell phones and other electronic devices now. And please refrain from taking photographs during the debate, unless, of course, you are professional here tonight. There are League volunteers collecting your questions for the candidates. Please raise your hands when you have written them. Please note the topic of your question at the top of your card. And I know some people haven't done that yet, but going forward, if you could, we would appreciate it. Please submit any questions you have for the freeholder candidates now if you haven't already done so. So I do see a couple of hands up, and we have some question collectors. Questions for sheriff candidates will be collected during the brief, brief break after the freeholder candidate for. Restrooms are to the right as you leave the auditorium. At this time, I'd like to introduce our moderator for this debate, Ms. Sandy Matson. Ms. Matson is not from this voting district. 
She also is not a member of the Greater New Brunswick Area League of Women Voters. She is a league trained moderator and also serves as the League of Women Voters of New Jersey's lobbyist. Ms. Madsen will introduce the candidates and outline the format for this evening. Thank you. <laughs> This is a time debate. Um, the candidates have a pro two minutes to answer questions or make opening or closing statements. There are a number of uh, parts to the opening statements. They were giving, given two questions by the League of Women Voters of the Greater New Brunswick area, which will be the second portion. They were then asked to pose a question to their opponent, and then I'll be taking questions uh, from the audience and then closing statements. So there's a lot going on. The timekeepers are Larry Klein and Noelle Mazur, who are sitting in the front. They have a 30-second card, which is white. So if you see cards popping up in the front row, that's what they are doing. And then a uh, stop sign for when time is up. Um, it is my pleasure to introduce the candidates on my right is Deputy Director uh, Freeholder Patricia Walsh, Walsh, excuse me, who is the incumbent. And on my left, her challenger is Melanie Morano, the Democrat. Ms. Walsh uh, is crew number one, so she will start with her opening statement. Thank you. First of all, I'd like to thank the League of Women Voters for putting this together tonight and for all of you who have come to listen to politicians speak. My husband Jack and I have lived in Somerset County for 39 years, and I've had the pleasure of raising my family there and have enjoyed very much all that Somerset County has to offer. The boundless acres of open space, a wonderful park system, safe and secure neighborhoods, vibrant and diverse communities, and most importantly, a very strong public education system. It truly has been and remains a wonderful place to live, work, and play. But simply put, this did not happen by chance. I'm running for re-election to continue the Republican-led Board of Chosen Freeholders' legacy of good government, to protect and preserve more acres of open space, to maintain our first-class services to our seniors, and above all, the county's reputation of running a fiscally conservative government to keep Somerset County affordable for all residents. We are business friendly, fiscal stewards to taxpayers, we're among the healthiest counties in the nation, and we preserve thousands of acres of open space. As a board, our goal was originally 20,000 acres. We have reached the 15,000 acre mark already, and our county planning board is already considering moving that up to 25,000 acres. I cannot stress enough that these rankings do not happen by chance. Under the leadership of Republicans, Somerset County has become the model county for the entire nation. As a public servant, I recognize that serving the residents of Somerset County is a privilege, one that I have not taken for granted. I look forward to discussing my record as a public service servant and earning the support of voters of Somerset in the coming weeks. With that, I offer you my candidacy. Thank you. I would like to ask you to hold your applause until the end of the evening because there are so many segments and I want to get in as many audience questions as possible. So if we would just hold all of our applause to the end ending. Um, Ms. Morano, two minutes. Thank you to the League of Women Voters. What you do is so critical for our democracy, and I do appreciate it. It takes a lot of time out of your personal life, too, so I do appreciate that. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming tonight. My name is Melanie Moreno, and I'm running for Somerset County Freeholder on the Democratic ticket. Allow me to introduce myself so you get a little bit of my background. I grew up born and bred in New Jersey. I am a Jersey girl. 
educated in a public high school, graduated from there, went to a college in New Jersey, Ryder College, graduated with an accounting degree from Ryder, met my husband, a Jersey guy, Rudy Moreno. We settled in Greenbrook Township, bought a home, still living in the same house we bought 30 years ago. Raised our two beautiful children. They both attended public high schools, public, public schools K through their graduate degrees. And thank you teachers for making them very successful in their careers right now. You know, when we moved to Greenbrook, I uh, started volunteering. Girl Scout leader, CCD teacher, my husband was a coach on rec soccer. And when I was there, I said, geez, you know, I think things could be a little better here. So I decided to run for Greenbrook Township Committee. I got involved and ran for Township Committee and I won by two votes. So if you think your vote doesn't matter, it sure does. Please make sure you get out there and vote. While I was on the Greenbrook Township Committee, I served for six years, culminated that term as the mayor. Professional background, so you know, I was an accountant, an auditor, promoted to be a manager, and I'm currently a vice president in charge of business development for my company. I currently serve as a commissioner on the Somerset County Tax Board, and I've passed my certified tax assessor's exam. As a freeholder, I want to focus on the economy, the environment, and our education. With my background in public service, my background in business, I think we have the energy and the passion to do better in this county and in all of the residents of Somerset County. Thank you. The first question from uh, League of Women Voters of the Greater Brunswick area goes to Ms. Morano. The question was, and they were given these questions, please explain the major functions and responsibilities of the position you are seeking. The Board of Chosen Freeholders, in, in a nutshell, is the governing body of Somerset County. So your governing body is responsible for the services in the county. And they're responsible for funding those services in an affordable way. And they're responsible for having the right people to perform those jobs. Now, some of those people are paid staff, paid professionals, and some of them are our volunteers. So it's critical for the Board of Chosen Freeholders to select the correct volunteers on their boards and commissions. Right now, your freeholder board oversees your county college, your Richard Holt mental health facility, your roads and bridges, the park system, our libraries, our courts and our justice system, to name a few. And not only do our freeholders handle these jobs on a day-to-day -day basis, importantly, they're there for the vision and plan for the future. They need the effective communication skills, they need the effective networking capabilities, and they need the business know-how to get those plans done and to weave those plans in with the 21 municipalities that comprise our county. With my background in business and government, I have the skill set and the proficiency to effectively perform those duties as a freeholder on Somerset County Freeholder Board. functions and responsibilities. Government is a service-oriented business, and it's our job as freeholders to see that these services are delivered to the residents as they need them in a very cost-effective manner. And this is done by constant visioning, another job of the freeholders. When we discuss issues, we're not looking at just what we want to see next year or the year after, but we develop five, 10, 20-year plans what do we want Somerset County to be like in 20 years? We have a population of over 300,000 residents and maintain over 262 miles of county roads and the inspection and repair of over 700 bridges. Other responsibilities of the Freeholder Board, we prepare and adopt the county budget, which is a difficult process because there's so many, many areas that are in need. We uh, authorize all expenditures and bonds we appoint members of all the advisory boards and the committees. We supervise the administration of county government. We are the legis policy and legislative part of government. We ensure compliance with the many state mandates, such as recycling. And we pro provide for the facilities of the courts and, of course, our jail. 
We also fund many human services and social services in the county. These are mandates from the state and come down for us. We have such as our seven senior wellness centers um, we, and on Meals on Wheels. Both of those two departments last year in 2018 served over 160,000 meals to our seniors. We have the Office of Veteran Services. We're charged with streamlining government. I have charged myself at my time as a freeholder in going out in the community and talking to taxpayers, evaluating ways to improve Somerset County. We are really good, but we can always be better. And no matter what the metrics, we are always in the top 10% of counties in the nation. We are continually ranked as one of the healthiest, the business friendly, and best places to live, work, and play in the nation. And once again, this did not happen by chance. The second question goes first to Mrs. Walsh and the question that was submitted to them are, what are the critical issues that you see facing Somerset County now and how would you prioritize them? Okay, one of the things is freeholder when we're out talking to everyone, the biggest issue on everyone's mind are taxes, taxes, taxes. And during my tenure on the Board of Chosen Freeholders, we have maintained that we have one of the lowest county tax rates in the state. We understand we want to make and keep Somerset County affordable for the people here in Somerset County. We know that um, this is not happening on a state level and we feel a responsibility to even be more fiscally prudent here at the county level. Budgeting is a tough process. We challenge ourselves to evaluate these programs yearly and, and bi-yearly. Are they still effective? If they are not, then it is time for us to look and change them, meet the needs. Government is a living organism. It has to change in order to meet the needs of the people in the county. We also um, are very effective in shared services. Uh, one of the most important ones we have done in the last couple of years is the merger of the Somerset County and Hunterdon County Jail. Again, saving the taxpayers in Hunterdon County and with a, a huge influx of cash into our S Somerset County uh, budget. And we have also contributed to a solar uh, project for the municipality, saving thousands and thousands of dollars. Another issue is transportation in Somerset County. And that is an issue that every year we spend hours at our department heads looking at where these buses should go. And, and how we should realign them. We do this by having public meetings every year um, and finding out what they need and where they need them to go. We also continue to fight for a one-seat ride service into New York City. It would make such a difference for many, many residents in Somerset County. Those are the two issues that we, I feel uh, at this point in time are most important here in Somerset County. Priorities. Well, I live in. Can you hear me? Is that right? yeah. I live in the township of Greenberg, along with Pat Walsh. So I, I'm going to venture a guess that she and I drive on Route 22 every day at some point in time. And when I'm driving on 22, I see so many vacant businesses, and it's just not 22. It's 202 and 206. And I just read in the paper the other day that J&J &J is closing up the Route 22 site in Bridgewater. And I'm bringing this up because, ladies and gentlemen, we have a concern with business. Our businesses are leaving. Businesses are not coming here. That's critical. It doesn't take me as a certified tax assessor to tell you that taxes have to come from someone. They either come from businesses or they come from residents. And when we don't have the money coming in from businesses, the residents are picking up the tab. Affordability is key in Somerset County. And we need to figure out new ways that we can keep these businesses here, have them expand, and new businesses come here. We need to think outside of the box. New visions, agritourism, recreational tourism, leisure tourism, historic tourism, we need to bring these businesses to Somerset County so that our tax base is more solid on the business side. Um, 
We are now moving to the part where the candidates were uh, told that they could ask their opponent one question. And it will start with Ms. Miranda with a question for Mrs. Walsh. Mrs. Walsh, easy question. Yes. Do you support Donald Trump for president in 2020? Um, I will say this. I thought we were here to talk about Somerset County. What are you afraid of? Does, does somebody else want to get up? Speak here. Okay. Um, listen, uh, this, this, uh, this debate is about Somerset County, and I think that's where it should stay. I cannot do anything about what happens in Washington. I don't have that power, nor does anybody else in this room, okay? So um, if you want to talk about Somerset County, that's fine. I have no idea yet, okay, whether I will support Donald Trump in 2020. Yes, you will. <laughs> this is Walsh, a question for Ms. Morano. The governor of New Jersey and your party campaigned and has governed on making New Jersey a sanctuary state. He also called upon New Jersey to become the California of the East. Do you agree with this policy to make New Jersey a sanctuary state? Well, I would love to be the California of the East because the last I checked, their economy was booming and their economy rivaled many countries in this world. So. I kind of would love to have that high-tech industry all in New Jersey again. One of the things our governor has been advocating for, to bring those tech jobs back to New Jersey, which they are so critical. Yeah. You know, we follow the laws in this county. Uh, we follow the laws in the state. And what the laws are, we follow them. And I respect people that are living here, Pat. I respect the jobs they do, and I respect the work that they do. And I honor them as human beings. Mm -hmm. Applause. As I said, when we allow candidates to ask one another questions, that's where we usually uh, get all our blood pressure rising. <laughs> <laughs> I am now going to start with the questions uh, that came from the audience. Uh, I have certainly more than I'm going to be able to uh, do in the, in the 30 minutes that we have. Um, so the first question that came from the audience is going to go to uh, Ms. Morano. One of my mottos as a teacher is do more with less. As a taxpayer, I am interested in how my tax dollars can be used as efficiently as possible. What are some tangible ways you could do more with less should you win in November? Well, first of all, thank you as a teacher. Thank you for being an educator. I'm very proud to say that I was endorsed by the New Jersey Education Association, so thank you for doing what you're doing. Doing more with less is the way I grew up, actually. Um, truth be told, I, I didn't come from, I came from humble means. We always had food on the table and a lot of love in the house, but living according to our needs was the rule in our home at all times. And it's the rule I follow for our family and the rule I followed when I sat as a member of the Greenbrook Township Committee. The other thing we need to do is sometimes we do more with less, but sometimes we want to do more with other parts and other, other funding sources. And I think we need to look outside of the box and look at where we can get additional funding sources. 83% of Somerset County's tax revenue comes from taxpayers, not grants or loans. And we really need to look into these other funding sources. We also need to do a better job at promoting our revenue sources from in-county, golf courses, equestrian stables. We need to get better marketing on hand so that these are, are better revenue generators for the county. And we have to look at get, securing more grants and, and, and aid through programs that way as well. 
So the question is, uh, tangible ways you could do more with less should you win in November? I will be very happy to say that uh, in Somerset County we have absolutely magnificent employees and our senior staff um, are really amazing. And one of the things that we have done and, and is done every year and is totally evaluated is how things are working within the county, the departments, um, and also with outside the county. And what we do is we cross-train. We have done that with mostly, in every single department in Somerset County, the employees are cross-trained. So that we have gradually, we have reduced our employee from like about 1,300 to down to about 1,100 employees through attrition and, and then cross-trained all to keep the same amount of programs. We've been able to do this in, uh, over the years Twice we said to our senior management, okay, we only want a 2% increase in each department. They went back to their departments and said, all right, actually what they did is say, you have to come in with a flat budget. You have to explain every single penny that you're spending. We got a new CFO and changed the way that the budgets were being done. And it was a great uh, eye-opener for many of our employees because they were just would say, all right, I'll just take 2% off the top of the budget. But zero-based budgeting is you start with zero, and you have to build that budget. It made them realize where they were spending their money, or where the money was going, and therefore were able to reduce our budget uh, tremendously. We um, had no tax increase for three years, um, about four or five years ago, but because of the cost of other um, tangibles that you have no choice to, on, we have actually stayed under the 2% cap. All right, the next question will go first to Mrs. Walsh. What do you see as the county's role in improving the sustainability of community-based emergency medical services in Somerset County? So I'm going to assume they mean like uh, rescue squads, et cetera, community-based, um, all right. So um, we at the county uh, have our Office of Emergency Management. We do offer uh, a lot of training to our fire EMS uh, all through the county, which saves the counties uh, a lot of money. If there are issues, I know many of the municipalities have gone for a fee-for-service, because there are just are not volunteers there. If there's any way we can help get volunteers so people can maintain their own rescue squads and fire EMS in their towns, uh, we certainly would be uh, amenable to working with them. Uh, but because people now aren't working in town like they were 40 years ago, the, the volunteer has gone tremendously down. And so many towns have gone to a paid service. We have uh, helped with uh, the first couple of that. The county was involved in negotiating some of this and looking at ways to keep everyone in Somerset County safe. And, and that is what we've done. Ms. Morano, uh, the issue of the sustainability of community-based emergency medical services? Volunteerism is difficult as Pat had mentioned. Um, and we need to do as a freeholder board the best that we can to coordinate shared services between our municipalities. And we need to be that liaison to the municipalities to work on some kind of a shared services for equipment too. Equipment is a, is a challenge because these pieces of equipment are hugely expensive, hundreds of thousands of dollars for these things. And as freeholder, I would love to speak with these towns and say, hey, let's coordinate for shared equipment as well, especially for things that aren't used all the time. You know, you always have to have a fire truck and an ambulance on, on site. But some of the other things that are particular for certain things, especially like flooding, that's an issue that affects us, especially in the, in the Greenbrook flood in Manville, we should explore those opportunities to share service on equipment as well. And we need to be the liaison. We need to be the, the, the tie for all of our 21 municipalities to talk with one another, to figure out these plans, to share services, and to help each other with this volunteerism shortage. 
Uh, yes, Mrs. Walsh is allowed 30 minutes, 30 seconds, excuse me. <laughs> 30 minutes. Okay, 30 minutes. I also um, was the mayor of Greenbrook Township for 11 years. I served 14 years locally, 11 years as mayor in Greenbrook Township. And um, I'm very proud to say that it was we were the first township in the state that merged our fire and EMS squad together because of all the declining volunteerism. And um, it actually was it was it went very well. They came to us and said we're in trouble. We sat down with them and said, "What? Well, how can we make this work?" And they also cross trained and the the uh, firemen learned how to drive the rescue squad and the EMS people learned how to drive the fire truck. So there is a way of doing it. The next question goes first to Ms. Morano. What role does the county play in supporting infrastructure in the municipalities? Where are there opportunities for partnership? Well, infrastructure is, is a broad term. Obviously, the county maintains roads and bridges through all the municipalities that I know of. So they need to coordinate with municipalities on these county roads and bridges there. Some of these bridges need help. Some of these bridges need assistance and extra bridges. In Montgomery Township right now, we've got a situation with uh, the Griggstown Causeway that's one lane. We have to look at the score, how we're gonna repair that or, or add an additional bridge. Um, read the question to me one more time again for that one. Opportunities for partnership with municipalities. Partnerships, so the partnerships there Freeholder, again, you are the liaison to all of these 21 towns to talk together. You're the bridge that works together with them to coordinate where these towns will meet and how these roads that connect together to these other towns can be run the most efficiently. Uh, hopefully, maybe some shared services between the municipalities if there's paving projects that need to be done, curbing, etc. <coughs> Um, the county is, has a very active uh, role in the infrastructure in a lot of the municipalities. We not only do the county roads, but for many of the municipalities, what we also do, uh, it's another shared service, they will come to us and say, I want to do four miles, and we'll get five or six of the municipalities that want to do four miles of what a certain service on their roads. So when we go out to bid, we bid that project also. So we're saving them money because there's an economy of cost. And we also do a lot of engineering services for many of the municipalities. The county has access to every kind of engineer that you want, you know, for hydro, for chemical, for you know, civil, just like every engineer you can imagine. We have at the county, and the municipalities cannot afford to have that many different experts on infrastructure improvement and therefore if they come to us and our engineers can do up the plans um, on a fee for service and provide do a lot of work with a lot of municipalities they're also um, to go back to the last one we are when we bond Somerset County has a triple-a bond rating only uh, one of about 66 counties in the United States of which there are like 3,000 counties that have a triple-a bond rating what does that do? That allows us to, when we go out to bond, to get a rating that's unbelievable. The last ones we went out were 1.5%. So we, when the, when the municipalities, and we contact them during the year, and um, they, we know upcoming that they're gonna buy a big piece of equipment or whatever, we partner and we do a shared service and we buy it um, with our bonds because it's a, a much less expense for them and it, again, saving the taxpayers a lot of money. The next question goes first to Mrs. Walsh. What steps can freeholders do to ensure diversity of groups like LGBTQ or people of color? Okay, we are on October 12th from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. holding our first uh, diversity fair in Somerset County. Um, our county has, and the diversity in the county is really amazing and wonderful. 
Uh, it, it just offers so many different ways to look at things and do things. We recognize that, um, and uh, so we have invited any groups that want to have a table or dance. We have two stages. Um, we recognize that it's time for us to really get out there and recognize the diversity and celebrate it, say thank you, and become more inclusive and, and bring the, uh, the diverse cultures into our structure in the building. Um, I think if you look through our building, we, we have a, a lot of diverse cultures there. And it is time, it has time for us to begin to open our eyes and to reach out to all the cultures in our county and say thank you for what they're doing. And please uh, come and join us on October 12th for our first diversity fair. Ms. Serrano, increasing diversity at the county level. Uh, I think the question also included LGBTQ rights. And, and well, ladies and gentlemen, I've been living in Somerset County for 30 years, and many of you have been living here maybe longer than I have, but certainly a while. And you, we have all seen the faces of Somerset County change. Uh, we are a very diverse county right now. It's not that it just happened overnight. This has been happening for decades, and it's a welcome change. It's a positive change. And as far as LGBTQ, I welcome the LGBTQ community with open arms. I am proud to say that when I was mayor of Greenberg, I was the first mayor to perform a civil union in 2009. Prior to that, weddings were not performed. So I welcome the LGBT community with open arms, and I welcome our diversity because it makes us stronger. The next question first to Ms. Murano. Many union workers have been in favor of the Transco Pipeline project that would run through parts of Somerset County because of the potential for jobs. Many other citizens consider it a potential for environmental hazards. Where do you stand on this issue and what influence could you bring to bear? It's a real easy answer. I reject the pipeline and I reject every one of the pipelines that are proposed or compressor stations that are proposed for this county. They are dangerous and we need to reduce our dependency on fossil fuels rather than uh, encourage their use. Well, I would say that there's one thing that uh, Ms. Morano and I agree on. <laughs> We, uh, Freeholder Board, we have already passed a resolution um, against uh, the, the pipeline and, uh, and, and the station, and we have um, attended, one of our freeholders has been attending the meetings regularly, um, and if need be, do whatever more that we can do to stop the pipeline coming through. Uh, Mrs. Walsh, what is the role of the Commission of Women in Somerset County, and do you believe it has met its mission? Okay, the role of the Somerset County Commission on the Status of Women is to identify and try and identify the uh, needs and wants of women in Somerset County. Um, we have a very active commission now, and I sit as the liaison to it, and. Um, well, the things that they do, uh, we, we have a dinner each year and honor anywhere from 10 to 15 outstanding women in Somerset County. Um, and the pro proceeds of that dinner, um, they just awarded actually this past week $1,000 to two women's organizations. The uh, second major event that they do um, is they hold a STEM event in October. I think it's the 29th, the last Saturday in October this year, have um, 97th and 8th grade uh, girls come <clears throat> to Somerset County Vote Tech is held, and it's to introduce them to the STEM uh, uh, careers, and there's hands-on experiments that are done. Um, have they met their mission? I think there's more that they can do. Uh, it is, again, an all-volunteer committee of uh, women that work uh, full-time, and they do a lot of things. Um, and what is exciting about this group that's there now is that they're always looking for new activities 
and, and new things to do. I think the Commission on Women needs something more than a dinner honoring them. We need a commission that is going to empower women and address the specific needs of certain women, especially the women that are in communities that are very vulnerable. I think the commission could be stronger, and I support it. I support the, uh, the event, the STEM event for young women. That's excellent, and we need to do things like that more to empower women and to protect women that are in vulnerable situations. Ms. Morano, um, I'm going to edit slightly this question. Uh, it has to do with the rain tax that you read about in the press. Uh, which has to do with uh, water quality, et cetera. The question says that uh, Governor Murphy signed a bill. I'm not sure that is correct. But anyway, the issue of a rain tax, would you support its implementation countywide, and how would it be funded? That's a great question. Um, our infrastructure, our catch basins, our sewer systems, uh, we are collecting so many fertilizers and chemicals through our, our water systems there. They are contaminating our waterways, and we need to take action to protect our water. I don't think there's a person in this room that thinks we should not have clean water. And if we do not have the wherewithal, we do not have the funding in place to protect these water processing systems, then we're going to have to think creatively. And maybe that is a good idea. But without having all full details, I can't say that I would enact a tax at this point or not. I really need to do more, uh, have more information at my hands. But it is a vehicle to protect our water quality and our water safety. Governor Murphy's rain tax <coughs> authorizes the county or municipality to form a Rain, uh, a rainwater uh, committee, and they have, somehow will have the right, it's, it's very nebulous, but they will have the right to say that, okay, you have an acre of land, and because you have an acre of land, but half the acre is your house, and this and that, impervious surface, you have X amount of water that's going to, when it comes down, is going to flow off of your land. And we're going to tax you on that water that flows off the land. This is just another tax from Trenton. <laughs> this will go first to uh, Mrs. Walsh. Um, and it relates to the budget. Are there any specific department or agency that needs attention, either uh, oversight or a change in funding, whether we're talking about more or less. So are there any specific departments or agencies in the county um, that in the next budget uh, cycle need attention? Okay, I'm, I'm thinking about this, uh, and I don't think that right, uh, we went through the budget, I was on the finance committee last year, um, and right now, no, I do not believe that I could pick out a department that needs to be uh, reorganized or redone. But again, what I said uh, early on, I think in my uh, opening statement, was that this is what we do um, throughout the year. Now, we'll start in November, um, begin uh, our uh, management team will begin looking at all the departments in the county, okay? And they will say, all right, this is what this department is supposed to do. Now, um, are they getting it done? It doesn't really need to be done. You know, with the, all the electronic age that has come on, uh, you know, I've been on the board now for 12 years. We, there's a lot of jobs that were there 12 years ago that we don't need anymore, okay? And so what happened with those people, the departments got smaller, most often uh, people either left if they wanted to and or they filled a position in another department. So, but it, it, 
it's that visioning that I talked about and also the evaluation of the departments by our senior management team yearly to find out if, in fact, they need the department. It doesn't need to stay the same. Does it need to get bigger? Does it need to get smaller? These are all the things that you have these discussions about during budget time. Um, so that right now, at this point, I, I wouldn't say that there's one particular one. Um, but I will tell you that we do, on a yearly basis, look at every single department in the county to evaluate its effectiveness and if it's getting things done that needs to get done. Uh, Ms. Morano, any particular uh, <coughs> department or agency uh, you think needs oversight or uh, funding? I definitely do. There's two in particular. Right now, I think we all know that we're suffering through an opioid epidemic. epidemic. Uh, it's terrible. I sit on the, I'm, I'm on the board of Somerset Treatment Services, which is a substance abuse clinic right in, here in Somerville. I can tell you firsthand, fentanyl, heroin, opioids, it, it's terrible. And it's affecting not just our young people, folks, it's affecting people in their 50s. Our demographic at STS is, is incredible. The biggest demographic is between 25 and 55. So we need to address this by two things, supporting our nonprofits that help in this cause, and number two, supporting the Richard Hall Mental Health Facility. We cannot turn people away. We need to make sure they can get there. We need to make sure they get the services they need because not just with substance abuse, but for all items, mental health is critical. So that's number one. Number two, RBCC. We need to fund RBCC more. Tuition is going up. These kids can't afford it. They're taking time off from school so they can work extra so they can buy their books for the next semester. We need to fund RBCC so these kids don't get another tuition increase. And we need to fund RBCC so they have the right programs in place to get them jobs upon graduation. And again, we need those businesses in Somerset County so that we can bridge RBCC and these businesses together to get these kids internships, opportunities, and jobs. Okay, there's a few things that, um, first of all, we have increased the budget at RBCC over a million dollars um, in the last two years. Um, the prosecutor of the opioid, um, nowhere uh, are, is there more concern than there is here at, our, at some of in our county. Um, we do also give over a million dollars to what, what we call point of service contracts, which are the nonprofits that Ms. Marano was speaking about to help um, with things that are in the community. And uh, Richard Hall Community Mental Health Center um, just started a new program, Reach for Recovery, um, and um, which is a really phenomenal. Uh, they've just gotten over about $3 million in grants for this opioid crisis. So we have, it's not that we have forgotten about it, we've been working hard on it. I'm going to take closing statements. They're in the reverse order. So it will be um, Ms. Morano first, two minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, I truly believe that Somerset County can do better. When I ran for Greenbrook Township Committee, I ran because I believed Greenbrook could do better, and I believe we accomplished that. While I was on the Greenbrook Township Committee, I secured a historic home, negotiated with the state for that home and all of its land for the price of a dollar. That land now is a park. When I was in Greenbrook, I coordinated, created Volunteer Day that got together over 400 people in the community for a true community service day and joined together by a luncheon in the afternoon. These are the things that we can do on the county level to make things happen. I want businesses to locate here in Somerset County because they have an educated workforce that they can pick from for, for employees. I want 
and students to come here to Somerset County to learn at our RBCC campus and to desire to be there and afford to be able to attend. We need a place that homes are in an environment that's clean, air, water, land. We need to take every step that we can to protect our resources and keep it clean. And we need that vision to tie together that environmental tourism, historic tourism, and bridge all of our 21 communities together so they all share this prosperity. I have that drive. I have that business know-how. I have the background in government, accounting, and in the business world to get these things done. As I started telling you, I'm a Jersey girl. I've got the grit to go out there and get the job done. On November 5th, I ask for your support at the polls. My name is Melanie Morano, and I thank you for coming tonight. Again, I want to thank the League of Women Voters for holding this informative debate and for all of you who came. I'm sure after all of this conversation this evening, the residents have realized what is at stake in this election. I began my career in public service at Greenbrook Township also, served 14 years there, 11 of those years as mayor. And I just heard today, today's the 20th anniversary of Hurricane Floyd. And um, I was mayor then, we lost our building, there was a lot of rebuilding to do, it was pretty amazing. And I've done a good job serving <clears throat> our residents as a Somerset County freeholder. I'm running again because I want to give back to a community and county that has given my family so much. Serving as your freeholder has been the opportunity of a lifetime for me. And I am just as honored, humble, and enthusiastic today as I was when I first took that oath of office. Somerset County is known for its amazing quality of life, and our residents recognize that. According to Niche, a national leader who uses public data sets and public reviews, Somerset County has been recognized for the services we provide for our diversity, for our public education system, and the health of our residents. Just last year, our county was ranked as the best county to live and raise a family in New Jersey the best county for outdoor activities in New Jersey, the county with the best public education system in New Jersey, and the healthiest county in the entire state by niche. I am proud of my accomplishments on the Freeholder Board, and I cannot impress upon voters that this does not happen by chance. The proactive form of government we have instituted here in Somerset County has and continues to serve all residents well. I look forward to the coming months of the campaign and continue to serve as a fierce advocate for every resident in Somerset County. Thank you and God bless America. Forum. I want to thank you for your enthusiastic support, your questions. There were a number of questions I didn't get to, and it's my habit. I will just briefly, I apologize. There was a question about uh, free venue uh, for meetings um, for civic organizations. There was a question about transparency. There was a question about the pilot. And there was a question about um, using space in county parks for perhaps solar or wind farms. Uh, and then several other questions that were, were discussed uh, uh, at, at other parts. Uh, so again, uh, thank you. Uh, this is an early enough uh, forum that the registration deadline is October 15th. If you have moved, or if you have new neighbors or anyone else you know that needs to be registered, uh, please uh, be proactive about that. There are forms in the back that the League of Women Voters has brought. There's also sufficient time for vote by mail. And as was said, the election is November 5th, Tuesday. And one last plug for the League, our vote411.org 
which allows you to look at the ballot and um, officials who have answered questions we've submitted to them. So thank you and thank the candidates. So you have five minutes break for sure.